Right, so what is the binding problem? Binding, and let's write this other word in a different colour, and we'll see why in a bit. Binding problem. Now this is really a problem that arises from a number of different things that we've already kind of talked about. If we, we've, we've talked a little bit about different modules in the brain. We said that there was an area of the brain that processes faces, that, that was the fusiform facial area or fusiform facial gyrus. Uh, and other, when we look at neural correlates of consciousness, we'll see that areas of the brain have been discovered that seem to deal ex almost exclusively with, with things like color, um, motion and a person can can lose the motion area and thus they although they still can perceive color and faces and everything else they lose the ability to perceive motion and we could have areas that 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 deal with specific um, with shapes with um, with various angles of lines and, and many many different facets of the visual scene now what we have to imagine then is 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 is, sorry, I zoomed out there for a moment. What we have to imagine is if if we have these different areas in the brain, let's let's imagine that this is say the photoreceptor from the eyes. Then that neuron ha is travels so far, the information maybe gets split. Maybe some of the information has to go off to the color center, so our brain can produce this experience of color, and it, it decides whether there's reds and blues out there, and and there's there's separate areas for reds and blue perhaps, and and then there are areas for motion, and maybe there are a bunch of neurons in the motion area, and then there's of course the the facial area, and if there's a face out there, then that has to be activated too, and ultimately amongst all of the neurons in the brain. This information coming from the eyes gets split up so much that it's hard to imagine how the brain keeps track of it all and how 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 come that that right here you've got you you've got the visual experience of the shape of these letters in in the word binding and that activates one part of your brain that recognizes the word and then you've got the the information from the color the, the, this color green then the brain has to keep track because green and the word are processed by different parts of the brain. The brain has to keep track and make sure that green gets stuck onto the bit of information that is this word and that and the, the, the word problem doesn't suddenly show up as green. Um, and this is the binding problem. How come how does the brain kind of keep track of everything and unify it and bring it all back together? without losing track of what's supposed to go where what's supposed to go where there's there's again a lot of um, talk about whether the, the binding problem is a real problem and there, there's interesting cases and one of those cases is in the patient known as rm who had a condition known as as balance syndrome balance syndrome and in some experiments um this patient was shown things very much like this. He was perhaps shown a, a red O, let's say it was a red O and a blue T. Now in most tests, when asked to kind of figure out which was which, he got it right. But, but some of the time his brain misattributed this and showed him a blue O and a red T. T. Uh, and so th th this processing between the different modules didn't, even though the different modules process it, when it came back together to produce a single uh, per perception, um, the brain misattributed the color information to the wrong object out there in the visual world. Um, a way to think about this is to imagine perhaps extremes, where if, if we see, if, if I'm looking up the road and there's a lamppost let's say there's a lamppost this is a lamppost of some sort and let's also say that there's a shiny red sports car this is not a shiny red sports car this is a crap car that is red <laughs> and and this car is moving in this direction so we've got we've got um, we let's say there's a part of the brain that deals with the objects as well. So we've got the objects of the lamppost and the car to recognise. There's the shapes. There's the, there's motion that needs to be analysed. That that the car is moving. The lamppost is still. There's the colours, the textures, and so on and so forth. There might even be there might even be the face of a person 
in the car driving it. Um, but but what about if we could we imagine a scenario, a theoretical situation where binding has got really, really messed up in the brain and things are just not being brought back together in the right way? Is it possible that we could perceive the car as being still uh, while we see the lamppost moving down the street? Because we, we've got that, that motion information, but it's been attributed to the lamppost. And so that would be what we perceive. Or perhaps rather than the red shiny texture being attributed to the car, it's, it's attributed to the pavement, to the pavement. And our car turns out the texture and color of tarmac or something where where binding of information that, that that is being processed by different modules is being brought together in a very incorrect way there is an example of this there is a uh, th this is a, an extreme and we you know we don't know how if this su such a thing would be would be possible it's a it's a, it's a interesting idea but i there's there's a website i i brought up earlier that that shows an example of an illusion that demonstrates the possibility of the binding problem. And the first thing we're supposed to do, click on the illusion animation and sit so your eyes are about eight inches from the screen and look at the center of the anim look at the center of the anim of the animation and pay careful attention to the direction the red dots appear to be moving. So let's watch the Im the animation. I don't know how this is going to turn out in this video, so I'll put the link to it. So I'm looking here in the center, but concentrating on all of the red dots, and they all appear to be moving downwards. All of the, as I keep my attention here, I keep my, my vision focused here, all of the red dots appear to be moving downwards. Okay, very good. Let's go back to our description. Step two, sit with your eyes about eight inches from the animation, but now look at a point about an inch from the left-hand edge of the screen and see what's happening. So this is the same animation. And yeah, okay, so, so, Wow, what am I seeing now? So I'm looking about here, and these red dots, if I if I keep my vision focused here, I can look kind of with my attention across here, and all of the red dots appear to be moving, except at the very edge of my vision. Some of these actually appear to be moving down. Let's just try, I'm going to pan across. I've got some down here, some up here. These are all down, but if I actually look over here, these are up. And so our brain is misattributing motion information with color information um, in this illusion. If it, I hope that it's worked for you as it has for me. It's very, very cool. Um, what's actually happening is that there's a column of red dots moving upward here, a column in the center moving down, and a column on the other side moving up. But our brain has to make assumptions about the world. And if, again, as I stare in the middle where my mouse cursor is now, all of the red dots appear to be moving down. In fact, I seem to have some red dots moving down and some moving up across the whole um, field here. You know, binding in my brain right now is being extremely messed with by these mischievous uh, researchers, whoever designed this illusion uh, at the California Institute. <laughs> so, so that illustrates the binding problem. How does our brain keep track of information and put it back together? Specifically, if we imagine the fact that that perhaps information takes less time to travel through a shorter circuit. Let's imagine that, say, the color circuitry is short, the axons in the neurons are short, and that whole thing ha can happen very quickly. But the motion pathways might be very, very long, and so it has to go round a bunch first. So, so they even end up out of time with each other by the time they come to, to being bound back together. So that makes it even more of a problem as to how the brain keeps track of, of all of this information. Uh, so this is the binding problem, um, and it's, it's just another, another problem of the mind.